Joining me are two special guests, Joel Lightman and Cody Fedwick, co-founders of the Great Canadian Dueling Pianos. And they're here today to talk about their background and how it all began, this unique concept, Great Canadian Pianos, Great Canadian Dueling Pianos, rather. Welcome. Yeah, well, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for having us. Yeah, I'm yeah. Cody and that's Joel right over there. We do this all the time on stage. <laughs> Yeah, you have such incredible backgrounds. Like, um, Cody, you're a producer, performer, and you also have your own music company, Fedwick Music, yep. from my understanding, yep. and assistant music director for the 64th and uh, 64th Academy Awards. That's right. And can you tell, that was quite a while ago. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, you know, that's my bio. My bio goes on for, for days, but um, just, you know, it just mentions people that I've worked with. But to put this all in a nutshell, um, a lot of us over the years who have been live musicians and migrated to the studio work, including myself, and um, I was coerced by a, um, a friend of mine who is a pianist to come out and see him perform in what he called the most amazing thing that he stumbled on in his many years as a solo piano player. And it was this thing called dueling pianos. And I didn't know anything about this. This was, this I think was about 2009, 2010. So I go to see this show with my wife and we can't get in. The, the, it was just, there was a line out front to get in. And I managed to peek around the corner to see what's, what was going on. And it was bedlam on the inside. It was like people jumping all over the place and having fun. And, you know, they're, the guys are dancing all over the stage. And I'm going, this is dueling pianos? What the heck is this? <laughs> so finally, we came back after an hour and we got, a, we got a chance to get in. And we sat down and I looked at it and I went, wow. And that was my involvement with it almost immediately. Um, because it breaks that wall between the audience and the performer. That's what, you know, the fourth wall, uh, whatever you want to call it, um, and, and involves the audience in what's going on, because what actually happens is we're taking requests all mm -hmm. the time, constantly. So it becomes a personal thing for the person who gives the request. It could be a dedication or blah, blah, blah. Anyway, fast forward about another six years, and I meet this bloke over here, this guy, you know? <laughs> The guy with the beard who can't sit still over here. And unfortunately, that is, I, I have an issue with saying still. So, sorry. Yeah, he, he can't. He can't sit still. So this is perfect because he just like you know. Um, uh, and I met uh, Joel. Uh, he actually came down to the cabaret which we were performing in because I started performing there uh, with my friend Alec, and um, it built and built and built, and it was fantastic. And I did another uh, stint with him, but basically Joel came to me and said why don't we do this uh, on a semi-permanent basis and start a company? And long mm -hmm. story short, we have this company now and we've been quite successful over the past three years um, until COVID. And then all of a sudden COVID just blew the lid off of just about every musician you probably have talked to. Um, and Joel and I really had to have a strong think as to, how we do this as, as, as our clients just fell left, right, and center, just falling like dominoes. Um, and we decided to do something on Facebook. Maybe Joel can take it from there. Um, he can tell you a little bit about that part of that. Yes. Joel. <laughs> when, when we started streaming, we just thought, you know, this would be a good way to utilize our time and, you know, like, we had no real expectations. It didn't cost us a lot of money to get set up because we had quite a lot of equipment sitting around. And then we finished doing our first stream and we did it from the club that we had in downtown Toronto, which is now sadly closed. Thank you, COVID. Um, and we looked in our PayPal at the end of the show and went, well, that's a decent night's work. Yeah. And then we thought, well, all right, let's do a couple more. And so we did a few more and then it turned into this every Saturday and every Wednesday. And we have a community of, 
of people who come regularly, about five or 600 people. Like, wow. Not at every show, but they're definitely faces and names that we recognize. And these people come and they show their generosity. We never charge for the show. It's always like, if you're enjoying yourself or if you want your request to get like some priority and get it straight to the front of the line, there's, there's a very good way of doing that. We are musicians, we call it lobbying. <laughs> and you know, it's been really amazing. Genuinely, we're both very humbled by the outpouring of love that we've had from people and giving people an outlet for something that we love to do and they love to come and see. Like we've been incredibly lucky. Yeah, and as yeah. the weather has got better and the, relax and the uh, regulations have been relaxed, we've started to go out and do like parties on people's streets for these, mm. for these events. So like, we've, we've taken this community and whilst the initial community is like coast to coast in Canada, there's quite a lot of people here in Toronto and slightly further afield. And we're, we're going out and playing their street parties and like giving them the real life version of what they've been watching through a screen. But yes. you know, initially the, the reason we are kind of reaching out um, was our, our story. And the story is that two musicians can still keep this thing going, even through all of this crap that we've mm -hmm. been experiencing for 17 months or however long it's been. I've lost track. We started in March of last year. I do remember. No, the year before. Excuse, well, no, March of last year, right? 16 months. 16 months, yeah. So it's crazy. And we managed to keep ourselves afloat. Then we got some, we, we were fortunate to get one of our, uh, our um, clients who uh, had started a virtual uh, pay stream, uh, which we got involved with. So we started to get corporate clients through that where they would... Uh, you know, present us with corporate clients and we would do an hour or two for people who were doing their corporate functions completely virtually. Mm -hmm. So we were, yeah. yeah, so we managed to actually stay afloat, of course, you know, with, you know, a, a, be, a bite, you know, some pretty difficult uh, circumstances financially. Um, and and we're, we're here. And that's, that's what we really wanted to tell people was, we wanted to let them know that not to give up and, and, you know, this is what perseverance can do and, you know, to kind of get the word out. Now, of course, we're a little late on the draw because now things are starting to open up a little bit, which, which is, makes us both so very happy. Yes. We were <laughs> incredibly happy to have one of our first performances for live people yesterday. Yes. Wonderful. I mean, you'll still keep doing this virtually. Absolutely. Right? Like, I, think I think we'll live stream various things. I, I think it's it's been an amazing way to connect with people and it would seem a shame to build all that community and go, oh, we're right, well, back to life. Sorry, guys. So I think we're definitely going to have an element of live streaming. I mean, we're certainly right now, we're like taking a little bit of a break because it's quite nice to do a show and not be looking at a screen. But yeah. we're definitely going to be live streaming because there are too many people out there who like not, can't necessarily get to live music. Like we've had people who are in seniors' homes who've really enjoyed the shows. And that's now led that they're, they're unlikely to be able to come and experience live. So it's nice to be able to say to them, come watch the show. You know, even if we're outside, we'll set up a camera, get some audio going, send it to people. And then everyone gets to experience it in a way that, I mean, wouldn't have been possible even five years ago. Yes, yes. I mean, you know, it's so thankful to have this technology. And, you know, you have such a a wide variety of songs that you that you play and i've i've watched um blue suede shoes that was great uh -huh. <laughs> we know? do we do everything list to lizzo is what we say <laughs> or broadway to britney yeah. uh, it's, it's funny the wide variety because everyone likes a different thing right so we could be playing frank sinatra one minute and eminem the next minute right one of my favorite things about this gig is that you turn up to work having absolutely no idea what you're going to play we could be playing stuff from the 40s and Cole Porter and Elvis and then like some old rock and roll or we could be playing stuff that came out in the charts last week I, it's it's so fun to just come up and like what do you guys want to hear and that's one of the nicest things about the show because it becomes really personal to the audience because we turn up we sit down like I have no idea what we're going to play so you tell us yeah so that's wonderful I mean is there a favorite a tune you like to do um is there one well, we have our showpiece. We have our showpiece tunes that we do, like Bohemian Rhapsody and, of course, Piano Man, or we call it the Unholy Trinity, you know, yeah. which is uh, Piano Man. <laughs> <laughs> we call it the Unholy Trinity because we get those requests a lot. So, you know, they're, they're those, but I wouldn't call those our favorite tunes. 
There and certain- Bohemian Rhapsody is funny, right? When people ask yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody, they're normally asking for it as a joke because they don't think we can do it. Right. So I quite like confounding people's expectations. Go, Not only can we do it, but we do it amazingly well. Yeah, with fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> the whole sense of fun is what we like to do. <laughs> yeah, so like, no, that's wonderful. And you know, um, so you have a studio in Toronto. Yes. yes. Yes, so that's... Cody and, is currently sitting in it. Yeah, we're sorry, yeah, I'm sitting in it right now. <laughs> and so you have, um, I mean, you're going to keep doing this. And if, you know, people want more information, where can they go? Well, you can find us on Facebook if you look up Great Canadian Dueling Pianos. Or you can come to our website, which is www.dueling.ca. Okay. And, um, you know... Joel, I didn't ask about your background. You have an incredible background as well, but you toured multi with multi-platinum artists, I should say. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? So I, I have had a really charmed life. I have <laughs> been very lucky to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, I got hired almost straight out of university to work as the resident musician at the Savoy Hotel in London, from where I met some amazing agents and producers and I ended up doing some touring with a band called CCR. And that took me like all over America, which was lovely. It wasn't the hugest or longest of experiences, but it was definitely one that stayed with me. And I've been play- I've played on many people's albums and all kinds of things. I've been treated remarkably well. But actually, I am most happy doing this because you can put me in front of 60,000 people but that actually, it's nothing like as exciting as being in a room with 500 people who were all screaming along to their favorite song. Because I like, we call them like whites of their eyes gigs. I like being up close and personal. <laughs> a sea of people is very, very cool, but it, it very quickly becomes the same. Every night becomes the same. It's just a sea of people, right? It's not these people asking for their song, having the best time. These people right up next to you. And that is, that is, I think that's why I found my calling doing this. Yes, yes. And um, are you both ever nervous or um, is there a ritual that you do? <laughs> <laughs> ritual. Would you like to have a scotch <laughs> before we start? I spank him before we go on stage. I'll do something. <laughs> I know. Um, no, there's all kinds. Of, I That's mean, not what we, you're supposed to tell everyone. <laughs> we, we, um, we, you know, we've been doing this for a long time and it's really interesting. It, it takes me back to the first time we had this gig in Ottawa once and we were just starting the company and we drove all day to get to this gig. We show up and it's in the, the, the museum of natural history, which you, I mean, the size of the stage, you could have put a symphony on that stage <laughs> and it was completely made out of wood. And there were totem poles that went up 30 feet in the air behind us. It's an incredible venue. And there are two little pianos sitting in the middle of this giant stage and a crowd of about, you know, like 90 to 100 people per table. And I just turned to him and he looked at me and we just went right out on that stage and just did it. But my God, we felt like a couple of ants going on to this large stage. And by the end of the evening, we had them in the palm of our hands. So that's when I knew that this was going to work because we were we were separated from the audience more than we normally would be. We actually had a barrier of about, you know, eight to 10 feet away from the audience and people still had a good time. So you normally we get we're, we're a lot closer to the audience so they can. We like doing it in the round. Right. So we yeah. like people because people like to come watch us play piano and listen to yeah. us sing and like get right up and close with the action, which often you can't do with a real band, right? Because they'll be on a stage and you don't want to get too close because like the guitarist will hit you in the head with his headstock. <laughs> but we're like, we're a little more like, well, you can see where I'm about to be. So if you don't get in the way of my piano, then you can come. like that. And that's why it's like, we're all sitting around someone's living room having a jolly old time. Because yeah, we want them to be up close and personal. We want them to be able to see the music being created that they've asked for. Wonderful. And is there anything else you'd like to add? Oh, no, I think we've had a pretty good talk. What about you, Katie? Yeah, just, you know, the, to, to stay tuned because we're going to be performing in Toronto more often and we would love to see some people down there. We'd love to see some new faces. You can certainly come and visit us on our Facebook page and check in. 
Absolutely. Um, Do come to our website if you would like the idea of dueling pianos in your neighborhood and you are within a relative distance of Toronto. We are at www.dueling.ca. We'd love to hear from you. Love it. Thank you both so much for. Thank you, you Christine. Know, oh, it was wonderful. And um, I'd like you to come back. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah we can have a progress report, you know, like uh, yeah. a little while closer <laughs> to Christmas. We'll let you know how freaking busy we are. That would be nice. Yeah. You, you got it. Thank you so much. So Thank I'll you, be Christine. in touch. Yeah. You're most welcome. So perfect. All right. Well, I very much look forward to it. Yes. Okay. Well, bye for now. Bye for now. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Hey, Jude, hey, Jude, 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 Jude. Joining me is award-winning actor, Nicole Oliver. She's an in-demand voiceover actor and she's a producer and director. And she's back on the show to talk about her Leo Award nomination for Best Performance for Narco, Narco Leap. Welcome. Hi, nice to see you. <laughs> Congratulations on your Leo Award nomination. And how does it feel? You've been nominated so many times. Oh. Yeah, well, you know, it, it feels awesome, especially for this project. This was started out as a labor of love with Kate Green as the writer and creator and director and producer. And Kate and I used to work together on a show called Crash Test Mommy um, way back in the day. That's how we met. And Kate is incredibly driven and talented and loyal, which is a really rare quality in this business. And uh, she approached me um, a couple of years ago about this web series idea she had and asked if I'd be a part of it. And I said, of course. And that turned out to be Narco Leap. And um, we've done two seasons. And yes, I got nominated for uh, my betrayal, my betrayal, my portrayal. <laughs> kind of yeah. have a bit of a Freudian slip there of uh, Big Bad Mama on the show. So I'm really grateful to her for the opportunity, but for her friendship and her loyalty, that means so much. So you play the mother, Kelsey's mother, right? Yes. And, and you've been nominated for the episode of Sanctuary? That- yes. Yeah, so we did, there were six episodes um, this season. So I was introduced in season one. So I don't want to give away too much in case people haven't seen it, right? But um, basically my daughter, um, Kelsey, played by Chelsea Reese, I did it all for two seasons because their names were the same except for a K. She is special and special in that um, suffers from what appears to be narcolepsy, which is you can fall asleep in an instant. Um, but it turns out she actually has a gift. And when she is asleep, she is able to transport herself into other people's bodies and actually take over. So of course, having this kind of telepathic teleportation gift, the government is interested in her. Um, And so season one is her kind of discovering that she's special, hooking up with what will be her team uh, and trying to figure out why and who's after her. And at the end of season one, there's a big reveal. And then we go into season two, where Helen, my character, is is the mom, but um, maybe a little bit more than a mom. And maybe I've known a little bit more about what's happening than it first appeared. And uh, season two takes us on a journey of massive kickassery, as I say, if I'm allowed to say that, Um, (laughs) where... uh, Yeah, it's a very strong female-driven show, and uh, it's about power friendship. It's about persevering. It's about families, ultimately, and relationships. But it's also a fun sci-fi romp. So if you haven't seen it, I think it's still on YouTube or Highball TV. I think it's going to be on Vimeo as well. So I really encourage people to look it up on the World Wide Webs and settle in for a, a fun watch. The episodes are anywhere from six to nine minutes. So, you know, you can certainly binge it. It's not too hard to binge it in a day. You know, we're uh, like, what do you like most about the Leo Awards? I mean, we're doing it virtually. Well, this year. I, I like being, I think for me, I just love the opportunity to be with everyone and to celebrate our community, which is unique. And, you know, Canada is a huge place. The industry can be incredibly Ontario, Toronto centric. So it's kind of like you go up against Rocky Mountains and it kind of seems a little difficult for people um, artistically from back east to get over that mountain to meet us. And I'm from back there. So I feel like I can call us out a bit for that. So the Leo Awards is an amazing opportunity for us to celebrate the best of what we do here. 
But what I love the most about it is just getting together with everybody, getting dressed up and getting together with everyone. So this is the second year that we've had to do it virtually um, for good reason. Um, but I'm a little I'm a little sad that I won't necessarily be able to be in a space and see everyone else and congratulate everyone else for all their hard work and kind of like Christmas for the entertainment industry. Right. If you celebrate Christmas or Kwanzaa. Or, you know, pick your holiday, <laughs> but that big holiday, right? Where you all get together and find out what everyone's been doing for the last year and lift everybody else up, give everybody lots of hugs. So I'm looking forward to everybody getting vaccinated so we can get back to that. Congratulations. And I want to talk a little bit about your voiceover work, My mm-hmm. Little Pony, The Sausage Party. <laughs> tell us tell us about, um, you won an award for My Little Pony, right? In... 2013, was that correct? Yeah, I won an award. Actually, it was from Littlest Pet Shop, but it was yep. for the UBCP Actor Best Voice. And uh, it's quite an honor because there's a lot of great voices in this industry. So, um, yeah, voiceover, something, something, voiceover work is something I've done in tandem with my on-camera work from the very beginning. Um, way back when I started When the Earth Was Flat, there wasn't a lot of opportunity for comedy. But cartoons, animation certainly did deliver that. And so that was intriguing for me. Um, And I was fortunate enough to be able to work in it right away. And I mean, I think Chris Rock kind of blew it for us in the Oscars a few years ago when he was doing his cartoon and he told everybody he could make a lot of money and show up to work in his pajamas. Now, it's true. I can show up to work in my pajamas. I don't necessarily make millions of dollars like he does. But it's very it's it's like as an actor. It's a great job. It's like banker's hours almost. And you can, you, it doesn't really matter what you look like. It's how you sound and your ability and your talent is what's judged. And in the before times, you get to get together in a room with a whole bunch of other actors and just be creative. And it's a really wonderful experience. And I think having had that in my career to this point has allowed me to stay in my career for over three decades, going into my fourth now, because... I haven't had to take whatever was in front of me in terms of on-camera work. All the voiceover work has given me the flexibility to be pickier in how I want to move forward as an on-camera actor. And so I'm really grateful for that as well. Nicole, what's next for you? Oh, goodness. Um, Well, I'm actually on Nancy Drew. I joined the Drew Universe last year in season two. I play Ace's mom. Ace is played by Alex Saxon. So lovely, lovely human. So I... Maybe I'll be back for season three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>